Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Rick Mega. Myself, Bupa Shuna from NRS, Kolkata. This video is going to be a bit different, in which we are going to discuss a few important explain wise and some other questions that are really important for your board exam. And you know, we have the compiled paper by Rick Mega for 13 years anatomy. We are going according to that paper. And let's start with general anatomy. Let's start with the explain wise. So the first question reads like, Double bar body in client filter syndrome. So for th this kind of questions, we have to first de describe the unknown terms. So the unknown term in this question is bar body and client filter syndrome. So what is client filter syndrome? Now, this is a genetic disorder in which the baby has the genetic configuration as 44A plus XXY. And this occurs due to non-disjunction of chromosome which leads to aneuploidy okay so these are the basic things about our client filter cell syndrome now what is bar body bar body means when the set of chromosome has more than one x chromosome then the then one of the x chromosome becomes inactivated and the other x chromosome dominates okay and all the features are due to that dominating X chromosome. This inactivated X chromosome is called the bar body. So, what is the number of bar body? Now, we can write the number of X chromosomes minus 1 equal to number of bar body. Okay. Now, let us look at the question. This reads double bar body in client filter syndrome. Now, we have to make a note of a new thing at this. That is the client filter syndrome that has the genetic constituent of 44A plus XXY. But in some rare conditions, the genetic configuration may be 44A plus XXXY or 44A plus XXXY. So, in this case, the number of bar body is 2 because 3 minus 1 equal to 2. In this case, the number of bar body is 4 minus 1 equal to 3. But our question asks for double bar body. So we have to write that in some rare conditions of client filter syndrome, the genetic configuration is 44A plus XXXY. So in this cases, the patient will be having double bar body. Okay. Now let's look at the next question. That is spurt or sunt muscle. Spurt and sunt muscle. To understand this question, let us look at this diagram. Okay. So this shows one of our synovial joint. And it has two bones forming it. One is this one and one is the other. Okay. Now, we see here we have two kinds of muscles. What is the basic difference between these muscles? The one muscle is taking origin away from the joint and inserting near the joint. And the other muscle is taking origin near the joint and is inserting at a distant place. So, the muscle whose site of origin is away from the joint and site of insertion is near the joint. That muscle is called the spot muscle. And the muscle whose point of origin is near the joint and the point of insertion is away from the joint, that muscle is called the sunt muscle. Okay. Now, what is the function? Now, we can understand that this muscle, when this muscle will contract, this bone will slowly move up. So, we can conclude that the sunt muscle helps in slow movement of the joint. Whereas, when this muscle contract, there is a rapid rotatory movement. So, the function of this sunt muscle is to slowly move the joint and the function of the spot muscle is to rapidly move the joint. Moreover, the sunt muscle, as it slowly moves the joint, it will help in stabilization of the joint and the spot muscle will help in rotatory movement of the joint. Now, we will have to state the examples. Before studying the examples, we have to know that this experiment of spot muscle and sunt muscle was done on our elbow joint. Now you can make it out that this muscle whose site of origin is at a distance place and the site of insertion is near the joint that correlates with our biceps brachii. Okay? And this muscle, this sunt muscle, here, this brachioradialis whose point of origin is near the joint and points of insertion is away from the joint. Okay? So 
that's our spurt muscle and stunt muscle you will get this pdf in our telegram channel okay now the osteoclast basically this is not explained why so we are leaving this now we have bird body present in client filter syndrome this is the same question but in this question we should not we need not mention the rare condition of client filter syndrome this is a straightforward question of client filter syndrome okay now again double bar body in client filter syndrome okay now the next question reads that an elderly female an elderly female of 38 years gave birth to a baby who is examined to be having a rounded face epicanthic folds and the characteristic single palmar or simian crease in the palm explain the genetic cause of the event so our point of information is that single palmar crease rounded face epicanthic folds okay and the age of the mother is 38 years now this characteristic single palmar crease is seen in down syndrome right so we have to start like this that the probable diagnosis is the patient the baby is suffering from down syndrome now what is the genetic cause the genetic cause is that trisomy of chromosome 21 okay now what is the why this occurs because of non disjunction junction like our client filter syndrome which leads to aneuploidy right which leads to aneuploidy right now why this happens this happens because of abnormal meiosis abnormal meiosis that leads to gamete formation in which the chromosomes do not apart do not part from each other and one gamete contains 221 chromosome and the other gamete does not have the 21st chromosome and this occurs mainly and this abnormal gamete formation mainly occurs in the case of female elderly female as the age progresses as the female becomes older the chances of abnormal meiosis increases so the babies who are suffering from down syndrome are mostly born to elderly mother okay so we have to add this points that this is a case of trisomy of 21 which occurs due to non disjunction of chromosome that leads to aneuploidy and and this occurs due to an abnormal meiotic division of the mother who is having who is at an older age okay so we are done with this explain why is from our general from our general anatomy now we will look into this question this classification of chromosome on the basis of centromere on the basis of centromere our chromosomes can be divided into four types metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric what is metacentric now the centromere lies at the middle and the arms these arms are equal in size what is submetacentric now the centromere slightly moves away from the center that leads to one long arm and one slightly smaller arm and what is acrocentric now this acrocentric means the centromere has moved a lot away from the center that has resulted in the formation of one long arm and one short arm and what is telocentric now this centromere has moved to a pole to the end of an arm that has led to only single pair of arm now what is this centromere this is nothing but the primary constriction that divides our that gives this gives shape to our chromosome this is nothing but the primary constriction okay now the next question is define long bone name the different parts of young long bone describe the blood supply of the long bone so what is long bone the bones having a elongated shaft and has two ends the elongated shaft is called the diaphysis and the two ends are called the epiphysis this is our long bone okay and the typical long bones we all know that they have three borders three surfaces and exceptions are always there to this now if we are to discuss the parts of the long bones then they have to talk about epiphysis that is the two ends these two ends then the diaphysis which is the shaft and apart from that there is metaphysis what is metaphysis now the epiphysial end of this diaphysis 
which is the area of active growth. This is our diaphysis and this is our epiphysis. And here is our metaphysis means the epiphyseal end of this diaphysis is called the metaphysis. And there is the epiphyseal plate of cartilage that separates the metaphysis and the epiphysis. Means this is our diaphysis, then we have the metaphysis, then we have the epiphyseal plate of cartilage and after that we have the epiphysis. Okay. Now if we talk about the arterial supply of the long bones. This is very easy. First of all, we have the nutrient artery. We can appreciate the nutrient foramen in the long bones that is directed away from our growing end of the bone. Okay. Apart from this nutrient artery which enters through the new nutrient for foramen and moves away from the growing end, we also have the metaphyseal arteries, the epiphyseal arteries and the periosteal arteries. Now, if you look at this diagram from the PT choice here, we will find that these arteries which are present in the epiphysis, these are called the epiphyseal arteries. These arteries which resides at the region of the metaphysis are called the metaphyseal arteries and this is the nutrient artery which is directed away from the growing end of the bone and we also have the periosteal arteries. Okay, these are the periosteal arteries. Now this nutrient artery, this supplies two third of the cortex and this periosteal arteries supply the remaining one third of the cortex. As we all know our bone has a cortex, outer cortex and a medullary cavity inside. Okay, and we also have to know that this metaphyseal arteries are derived from the anastomosis around the joint. So if there is anastomosis, then this anastomosis some branches from this anastomosis, anastomosing branches will give rise to the metaphyseal arteries and the epiphyseal arteries are de derived from periarticular vascular arcades. Okay, that's all about our long bones. Now, the next question is, what is metaphysis of a growing bone? We have already discussed about the metaphysis. This metaphysis is the epiphyseal end of the, the diaphysis that is separated from our epiphysis by this epiphyseal plate of cartilage okay and this metaphysis this is the active region of growth this is the growing region of the bone now there is a clinical correlation okay now the next question is that give its importance so Better to say give its clinical importance because one of its importance is it is the region of active growth that we have already discussed. The next one is that to understand the clinical correlation we have to know that we have to know that this epiphysis has ossification center and it grows alone. This diaphysis has some ossification centers and it grows alone. And then at a later age in the life of the human being, this, this diaphysis fuses with the epiphysis. And before few fusion, always this epiphysis is separated from this diaphysis by this epiphysial plate of cartilage. Okay. And this is the region from where the growth occurs. Okay. Now, before fusion, when the epiphysis is separated from this diaphysis by this epiphysial plate of cartilage, this arteries, this metaphysial arteries, the branches of the nutrient artery, these are all end arteries and they present with a hairpin loop. So, the bacteria that are present in our circulation that get lodged in these veins, in, in this hairpin loops and that may lead to osteomyelitis. So that cases of osteomyelitis is more in children. But what happens? When this epiphysis fuses with this diaphysis, then this epiphysial plate of cartilage is no more there. Then this hairpin loops are lost. And these arteries, you see, and these arteries anastomosis with the epiphysial arteries. And these hairpin loops are lost forever. So there, there is no point of this, the bacteria to get lost here. So as and when there is a fusion of this, Diaphysis with the epiphysis, the chances of osteomyelitis decreases a lot. Okay, so the cases of osteomyelitis are seen more in, more in case of children. Then reads mention the main structural characteristics of synovial joint. Classify synovial joint with example of each type. Okay, 
Now, synovial joints are the joints which permit free movement. And the characteristics are the surface of the bones, the bones forming this joint, the articular surface of the bones forming these joints are covered by this articular cartilage. Okay? And it, it has an articular capsule that has an outer fibrous layer and inner synovial membrane that connects the bones, that encloses the two bones to form the joint. The synovial membrane forms the synovial cavity which is filled with synovial fluid which is secreted by the synovial membrane. Okay? And sometimes this joint cavity can be partially or completely separated into two compartments by an articular disc which is mainly fibrocartilaginous in nature. Okay? And one more thing is that the bones of the joints are connected by various ligaments. Okay? That's all about the characteristics of the synovial joint. Now we have to classify our synovial joint. So the classification of synovial joint is based on structure. It can be classified into simple, compound or complex. Simple means it will be consisting of only two articular bones. For example, interphalangeal joints this interphalangeal joints now the compound joint that this joint is formed of more than two bones which share a common articular capsule for example ankle joint radiocarpal joint and knee joint now the complex joint this a joint is a synovial joint is said to be complex when it is partially or completely divided into two compartments by an articular disc for example, our knee joint, our sternoclavicular joint, okay? And on the basis of axis, this synovial joint can be divided into uniaxial, biaxial and polyaxial. The example of uniaxial is typical hinge joint, pivot joint, condylar joint or modified hinge joint, okay? Biaxial joint is ellipsoid joint and saddle joint and polyaxial joint is ball and socket joint, okay? Now, Let's look at the example of these types. That hinge joint is interphalangeal joint, okay? Pivot joint is atlantaxial or our superior radio ulnar joint. Cocondylar joint is knee joint. Ellipsoid joint is metacarpophalangeal joint and atlanto and atlanto occipital joint. Example of saddle joint is carpometacarpal of thumb sternoclavicular joint. Polyaxial is we know our ball and socket joint that is soldier joint, hip joint. Okay. That's all about general anatomy that I wanted to discuss with you all. Hope this video really helped you a lot for your preparation. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you are new to our channel, please do subscribe. All the best for your exam. Take care. Bye-bye.